Hello, BookTube. I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel. I am here with two very special guests from Down Under. I don't know if it's Down Under from where I am, but anyway, Down Under, as we say in the West, Nell and Scott of Fiction, Plot, and Gunpowder. Welcome to <laughs> BookTube. Hello, Sean. How are you? Of course, I mean gunpowder, fiction, and plot, but I just saw a hilarious video where Scott introduced a video in the wrong order, and Nell slapped him upside the head, so I was hoping to recreate that moment. <laughs> I can't believe you didn't edit out my abusing you. No, I think that's the best bit. I think I want documented evidence of your abuse. <laughs> So Nell and Scott are somewhat new. I mean, you started in early 2020, right? Nearly, yeah, nearly um, a year now. Nearly a year, so not that new. New to me, I discovered you in maybe early autumn of 2020. And we spent six months not really, we with about 50 okay. subscribers, and then suddenly it just started to work. Okay. About the time when our videos got better, I think. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm still waiting for that to happen for me, that my videos will actually get better. So go you, a, a very entertaining channel. And I mean, all you need to know about the channel is watch their intro and, you know, it's love at first intro. So uh, we have, I was going to say we did a buddy read, but no, that didn't work out, but we've, we've done some collaboration. <laughs> we've done some collaborations and I absolutely adore them. And this is my very first time to chat with them, quote unquote, face to face. So welcome to my channel and please welcome me to yours. Yeah, we will. Well, hello. <laughs> Don't worry, we'll edit. It was a stupid question, and I will edit any any. Well, it's not a stupid question. You're just not in a very welcoming frame of mind. What, what's the <laughs> problem? <laughs> She's in a shady frame of mind. Um, Are you having second thoughts about this? <laughs> no. Welcome to Gunpowder Fiction and Plot, Sean. It's a pleasure to have you on our channel. Oh my goodness, the pleasure is all mine. So I thought we might get started. We're just going to be all over the place, bibliographically and otherwise. And I thought it might be a great way to start for us to show the most recent book that we have bought or otherwise brought into the house. And if I say ladies first, Nell, it's going to be really confusing, but I will defer to you. How would you like to <laughs> uh, Okay, I, mean, I got this one. We did a while ago a Patrick Ness more than this. What was the video we did? We did a Trash My TV, Trash My TV Out, that's the one. And everyone told me not to buy this, which is Patrick Ness, what's it called? More Than This. But everyone who had read it, I was either deeply confused by it or obsessed with it. And I felt like I had to read it for myself. So. Well, I had a private communication with Nell a few days ago, and she said that that it described her marriage to a T. <laughs> <laughs> A train wreck. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens when the host has a glass of wine before the Zoom recording starts. <laughs> <laughs> so I know that Patrick Ness is some kind of a, actually I don't know, I just know he's probably not a Sean writer, would you say so? I have no idea. I've I mean, really I only, never... Okay, I only read literary fiction, so I think he's not a literary writer. Is this some kind of science fiction? Or something like that, isn't it? Some trash, is it? Or... <laughs> some trash! <laughs> some trash. I really know very little about it, but I would not be surprised if it's science fiction, thinking about who said what. Mm. Mm. I've not read. I'm going in very blind. Very blind. Okay, great. That's why Nell likes to go in, though. Yeah, yeah I do. I like to go in not knowing very much. Not um, even knowing the genre. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I tend to buy books in a batch of a few at a time and, and I get them all confused and jumbled up by the time I get to reading them and I don't know what they're about again. I'm just quickly checking. I guess he started as YA and maybe still kind of specializes in YA. No, not exclusively. Well, I hope not because that will make me sad. Um, Especially with the amount of people who were clearly very confused by this book. If it's and... aimed at you. What is that one called again? Something more? More than this. 
more than this. Well, that is a YA novel. I'm sorry to break it to you. Wow. Well, there was lots According of- According to Wikipedia, and Wikipedia always tells the truth. It does. It does. I'm very, I'm surprised by the number of people, the number of grown-up adults who were clearly confused by this book. Well, there's a lot of adults that are confused and reading. <laughs> hey, yeah, yeah, I don't understand it myself, but uh, I'm a snob and uh, we're going to get lots of down votes because I'm making snobby comments. Let me just say I actually prefer <laughs> middle grade to YA. I think because... What, what is the difference of middle, I don't understand. I, I think it's I think it's autobiographical. My YA years were very unhappy. I was bullied and that, and so I don't really like stories that take me back to that. But middle grade, makes sense. Just, just happier time, a little bit more. So I, I've had better luck as an adult reading middle grade, and I've only maybe read four or less than I have ever. <laughs> read YA. But yeah. Anyway. Scott, what's your latest? What have you got? What have I got? I've hidden books. Don't kill my plants. <laughs> Jesus. I've got The Girl Who Smiled Beads by yeah. Clementine Wamye. Go in there. You, you can do it. No, I can't. <laughs> Wamayira? Clementine Wamayira. Mm. Yeah, we'll go with that. So that sounds like maybe what? Nigerian author? Rwandan. Africa? Rwandan? It's a story about the Rwandan massacres that happened in the 90s with the... Wow. Uh, what are the two the Tutsis, Tutsis, Tutsis and, and the Tutus. Tutus? Yeah. And that's all I know about it. So I saw Sadie Reeds again talk about it and just thought, that's something I've never read about. That's something I'd like to read about more. That's a weird thing to say out loud. <laughs> well, <it's, laughs> like, but I get it. It's, it is an interesting part of history. I mean, there's so many books about World War II that if I said I was interested in World War II, I wouldn't be weird. Like... I don't know. What do you think of our friend who's obsessed with Nazis? Well, <laughs> it depends on the nature of the obsession. If it's more like Nazi hunter or Nazi puncher, I'm okay with it. But anything, you know, more neutral than that. I would recommend a Rwandan writer who, I think, isn't the, uh, aside from the native languages of Rwanda, isn't the language, the colonial language is French, right? I don't know. I think you I, might be right. Yeah, I think I'm not sure either, but uh, her name is Scholastic Mukasanga, and she has written books that are in translation from the name of the publisher. It's gone out of my head, but I've read one and it's powerful. Yeah. Well, I have one that I don't know much about. I can't tell you anything about it, but it's got a pretty cover, which is why I bought it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, called the, it's called The Stromness Dinner by Peter Benson. And I pre-ordered it. It wasn't supposed to be published until January, but I got it before January. And I don't know anything about the author. I get, buy a lot of books through Twitter. Like somebody, I subscribe to all the bookish Twitter folk. And if it's a book that I don't know anything about, I'll look it up. And if I get a little bit of a whiff that it might be a Sean book, I just order it. And then I can't remember, you know, why you want read or who recommended it. That and I awesome. remember I did a little bit of research after I got the book, and I think the story is, where is Orkney, do you know? Um, it's an island off Scotland. Okay, and the publisher, so this story is set in Orkney. The publisher is a Welsh publisher, Saren, and the author, as far as I can tell, is British, i.e. English. So I don't know, but uh, it's got a good cover, so let's just go with that. Yeah, <laughs> I know Stromness is the largest city on the island of Orkney. Did you drop something? Oh, yeah, I dropped my bottle of wine. So Nell and I have wine. What does Scott have? Uh, I've got um, apple cider. Oh. Yeah. Well, that sounds even gayer than white wine. <laughs> my How dad fun. would agree with you. How fabulous. Um, <laughs> yes. I'm frequently called that. We are filming this on January 2nd. You guys, you know, we, you won't see it for a while, but have you been buying like crazy over the holidays or? I've been trying really hard not to, but I have some pennies burning a hole in my pocket <laughs> and a big list of books that I really want. Yeah. No, no, I haven't bought that big. I bought big before Christmas because I buy my family books for Christmas and 
most of them appreciate them and my little sister yells at me every year because she doesn't read and I sort of flip her the bird and <laughs> give her a book. But I always get distracted when I go book shopping for other people by book shopping for myself. <laughs> it's like books. Um, in Tokyo, there is the bookstore Kinokuniya. They actually have branches. I think they might even have one in Australia. Kinokuniya Books. No, 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 no. They have one in the States. I don't know where, the, where all they have them, but it's a Japanese bookstore. And the branch closest to me used to be five floors of Japanese books and one floor of English or foreign language books. And now it's, they've closed all the Japanese floors and they just have the foreign language books. That isn't very interesting. I'll probably edit that out. But anyway, they have a New Year's sale every year, 20% off everything in the store. And I will be going to that sale on maybe Thursday morning. That will be my last hurrah for my Christmas New Year's book binging. That sounds like fun. Mm. I think part of the problem is, well, I'm a bit dilemmering about where to buy books from because everywhere is really Amazon. Yes. You know, I don't know who you buy it from. It's really Amazon. Well, so and I have a solution for you. Maybe if you, you probably already know about it. Blackwell's. Blackwell yeah. is not Amazon and they have free shipping worldwide. Ooh. Yes. Greg of Supposedly Fun brought that to my attention. Now, for me, the convenience of Amazon is I don't have a credit card. So with Amazon, which I know it's the devil incarnate, I don't need a credit card. I can just, in Japan, I can just go to the convenience store and buy a gift card at yeah. an account and shop. But with Blackwell's, you need a credit card or a PayPal account. But no, that's the way to go. I mean, Blackwell's, I don't think it's, it's a chain store. I don't know much about Blackwell's, but it's not Amazon. I know that. <laughs> Everything else is Amazon, like book depository, A books. All Amazon. All Amazon, yeah. Yeah, even some of the more Australian looking ones that turn out to be Amazon. <laughs> Terrifying. But I was trying to buy queer books in particular. And so I found my sister's a performer at a venue in Melbourne that also is a bookshop, <laughs> um, a queer bookshop Fabulous. called. Yeah, totally. The Hyena and the Hare. So they're good for queer titles, but their, their range does seem to be quite limited to queer titles. So anyone who's not in that sort of community, I have to go find elsewhere. Shall we stalk each other's Goodreads profiles? Yeah. I have Nels loaded up and we are, for those of you that don't know, Goodreads, which is also owned by Amazon. Totally. It has a compare books feature. So I have compared Nell and myself, and we have 139 books in common, so that would include TBR and books that we've read, and we our tastes are 70% similar. I'm not super surprised by that. So, do you think that includes our taste in Scott or not? <laughs> <laughs> well, I've decided to keep him, so... <laughs> enough that one <laughs> Not so are you planning to read this is good to talk about because this video will go up just before february's invisible cities which egypt is in february right yeah it is so now i see you have the Jacobean building on your tbr yeah. And I have it on Scribd. Scribd is not owned by Amazon, last time I checked. And so I'm considering reading that for February's Invisible Cities. Ooh, I might, I was, it's on my bed, on my nightstand. I thought it might be the next one I pick up, but I might hold off now. <laughs> I can... Hold it for Invisible Cities? Yeah. Your gratification. That's it. You must read The Women of Brewster Place by Gloria Naylor. I loved it so much. I'm sure you will too. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that one. That was one that I, it came into the house and I very nearly stopped what I was doing and sat down with it. But I did it. So I'm excited about that one. Are we going to get into a nationalistic fight if I tell you that I was not a big fan of Picnic at Hanging Rock? No, who was? Oh, really? <laughs> Yeah. Okay. You're the first Australian I've ever had the courage to say I didn't like it. I, I, I didn't hate no. it. I, just, I was really underwhelmed by it. I feel like it was like a TV movie in my youth that was on all the time. It was, wasn't it? Yeah, it really yeah. was. So I do wonder if the book was a bit tainted by the fact that I've seen the TV movie mm -hmm. a billion 
billion times. I haven't, <laughs> I haven't seen the movie, but uh, right. I've that. <laughs> A Handful of Dust by Evelyn Waugh. I've read it twice, and I don't think it's a masterpiece of a novel, but it has one of the most chilling scenes in all of Western literature. I won't describe it to you now that I've connected it to the novel. You need to read it for yourself, but it's worth reading the book just for that one scene, because it's just like, oh my God! <laughs> I'd be interested in uh, anything that can make me make that noise. <laughs> <laughs> I have to like log you reading it and just wait till you get to that point. <laughs> Scott, do you have anything on your end with the your comparison? I've lost your comparison because I don't know how to use my just giving it now to figure it out because Oh, that's why you've given it to me. I have. No worries at all. You have fifty bookshelves on Goodreads. You say that like it's a bad thing. <laughs> Sounds like a system and a half. <laughs> Currently reading, average rating. Do you want me to grab my computer? Yeah, that's a way. That's oh, a way no, no. Well, if you want, but that's fine. If you just want to look at my something on my well, profile. Yeah, let's just flick through. Yeah, I'm, I'm, and use the brain for comparison. View all 50 bookshelves. You asked a geographical question earlier and I realized that you didn't know this about my husband, but he has an atlas in his brain. You can ask him any geographical oh, question. Oh, no, I'm, I'm not <laughs> that good at it. Great, because I have no geographical orientation whatsoever. I have a sexual orientation, but I do not have a geographical <laughs> orientation. I lived in Edmonton, Alberta. Have you heard of that city? Once or twice. Okay. <laughs> And I lived there for like several years before I realized how far north it was on the map. I mean, I just, I'm just clueless, absolutely clueless about geography. So do you guys disclose where in Australia you are? I don't know. We're about an hour outside of Melbourne, pretty close to an area called the Mornington Peninsula. If you, I don't know how famous it that is outside wine. of Australia, but it's a wine region. You had me at wine region. <laughs> <laughs> but do you know who Melbourne was named after? I do, I do, because Melbourne is in the state Victoria, yes. and and Victoria are, of course, the Queen and the Prime Minister. Yes, her first Prime Minister, and I just finished reading my 17th biography of Queen Victoria, and so Lord Melbourne is pretty fresh in my mind. Any questions? <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> so there was All I know is what the Crown... I know I watched The Crown obsessively, and so that's all I know about. I'm oh, not The Crown. What's the other one? The one with Victoria in it. Oh, Victoria. Victoria. Oh, I don't, um, I don't know that one. Who's this? Clara Oswell. Yeah. Well, yeah, 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 with Clara in it. Um, it's not Clara. It's Clara from Doctor Who. You know what I mean? No, because <laughs> I am completely illiterate in terms of television and movies. So. Ah. Uh, uh, but that is all I know. All I know is from TV. I have no knowledge of... Victoria. Well, I think I, what I have heard, read, is that that TV miniseries or whatever the heck it was kind of played up the romantic attraction between them and yeah. there was something there. But of course, once they dramatized it, they made more of it or they, they put it in a more visually and modern uh, context than it actually was. But yes, she definitely fell in love with her first prime minister. Don't get me started on the Royals. We'll be here all night. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So I'm going through your 2016 Read Harder Challenge. Okay. The, the man who mistook his wife for a hat. I love great, the title. Great, of that. great title. That's <laughs> by the uh, famous um, British American. Is he? Was he originally British? I, I'm not sure. That's by the famous neurologist Oliver Sacks. Have you seen the movie Awakenings with Robin Williams? Have you seen it? Yes, I love that movie. So that doctor, the doctor, that's Oliver Sacks. And this is one of his early case study books, The Man Who Mistook His <laughs> Wife for a Hat. No, I want to read it so much more. Really? It's good. Yeah. It's good. There is a, it's a bit jargony in places, but it's, it's wonderful. I think you might like it a lot. Yeah. I read it on audio when we went on holidays in the UK and I read it the whole way, the flight between Melbourne and London, which is a 24 hour flight. Oh. I, I did it in one, in one sitting instead of sleeping. 
Yeah, it's fabulous. You're... Sleeping is better. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I'm yeah. old enough. I don't think you guys are old enough, but I'm old enough to remember Dr. Oliver Sacks when he was still very much part of popular culture. He was always on Canadian radio being interviewed about this, that, and the everything. This, that, and the everything. Anyway, we'll just leave it in. He was really big in my consciousness. I wasn't that interested in medicine, but he was. He always made everything that he talked about interesting. And then just before he died, or was it maybe after his, just after his death, he came out? Uh, it's kind of hard to come out after you're dead, but uh, maybe the news about him actually being very closetedly gay came out. And his lover from the end of his life has written, uh, I think, a memoir, which I would love to read about him. And have you seen pictures of him when he was younger? No. Okay, no. hang on. We're gonna zo we're gonna zoom that picture right in here. <laughs> <laughs> He's got it on his desktop. It's, I think it's the cover of his memoir that was published just before or just after he died. And it's like, oh my God, Oliver, where have you been all my life? Here, can you see that? Here he is on a micro on a motorcycle. Yeah. Hello, yeah. Oliver. Oh, I, 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 uh... It looks like the same, um... It looks like it was shot on the same day, yes. Yeah. Yeah. One of them's him driving to the beach, and the other one's him... <laughs> him getting mobbed before he leaves. <laughs> well, I'm not going to be able to stop myself from using my decades-old pickup line. Let's get you out of those wet things. <laughs> fabulous oh my goodness uh this is definitely gonna have to go behind maybe not a paywall but a age restricted <laughs> wall <laughs> do you want to go to the question that you just texted me I what saw. is the most surprising oh. thing you've learned since joining happy anniversary what is the most surprising thing uh, uh, it's the first question from the anniversary tag that's what it is because you will have been copy pasting them no i know what it is i was watching freddie from sluggish reader this morning yes and it is his first anniversary and he was doing a q a and i was on my phone and i was typing it and i wanted to check something in the description before i hit Enter that you can't type, and so I copied it and discarded the post, and then looked at the description, and then very boring. But I've just yeah. pasted. So it this there. is uh, it's, it's a good this is question. This is Scott's go to <laughs> butt dial, something like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it's a, it is. A, we're going to leave all that in because that's fabulous. Uh, let, let me refresh my. What is the most surprising thing you've learned since joining BookTube? Um, not every bookish person is nice, but most of them are. Yeah, that's been a real surprise. I think that um, bookish people and non-bookish people are inherently different. Definitely, and I'd say 99% of bookish people are fabulous. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I think I notice the differences when I come across a non-bookish person in real life now. Uh -huh. I notice it much more strongly now that I'm more surrounded by bookish people. Mm -hmm. Almost developed like a fifth sense. You talk to a somebody about six <laughs> We just count them first. <laughs> um, the, the farther that I go down the bookish rabbit hole, the more uh, difficulty I have knowing what the hell to talk about somebody that is not obsessed with books. Yes. <laughs> what do they do with their time? Yeah. I just can't. They start talking about like sport and like The Bachelor and, and I don't know what to say to any of that. <laughs> <laughs> Even somebody who likes reading but isn't obsessed is like, why aren't you obsessed? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't understand that middle ground. The, oh yeah, I could pick up a book, but yeah. I might also watch The Bachelor. <laughs> yeah, I don't get that. <laughs> you guys have been on BookTube for about a year, and what is a pearl of wisdom that you have gleaned? Not all not authors are nice. Yes. I couldn't believe it. Like, 
like your job is to empathize with people and some authors are just horrible horrible people have um, you had a bad experience with an author not us personally but uh -huh. we've witnessed a few train wrecks but i just finding out that some authors own slaves for example like classic authors own uh -huh. slaves and even what's happened with um jk turfling and chimamanda and chimamanda those people but more just like the more you research an author the more like because for me a good writer can empathize with anybody and that is like the job of an author is to understand the characters they created and therefore i think once you can understand somebody you how should can be, you then enslave them how can you be horrible to people once you understand them like it's the more people talk about authors outside of their work i'm a bit shocked by that sort of thing. yes I definitely think, especially now that social media is a thing and we, authors that are still living and active, we actually have the ability to, like, interact with them and come up against them in a way that was not real even when I was a kid. Yeah. They're not figment sort of celebrity creatures that are untouchable anymore. And that's weird. Does this sound like a good direction to go for, uh, from this topic? Um, tell me about a positive and a negative interaction you've had with an author. <laughs> and, if, um, and, and if you don't want to name the author for the negative, that's fine. I think I haven't met any authors, so, but you, you have met. On uh, social I, media or? Yeah, I met... Um, Autograph when I was a younger woman, Tim Winton was my favourite author when I was a younger woman. He was, I just thought the sun shone out of every word he ever wrote. And he came to do a reading. I bought two tickets and my friend who wanted to come couldn't make it. So I invited my baby sister to come and meet him. And we got the book signed and there was question time and he did a reading and that whole thing. But I was so excited, I literally couldn't stand still. And that is a little bit of my personality. And the first thing this man, who I completely idolised, said to me was to lay off the red cordial. And I was gutted. I was embarrassed. I was like, it's not the worst action any human being has ever made, but I can tell you I've read his books differently afterwards. And I'm sorry, I didn't catch the reference. What is, what is red cordial? <laughs> oh, it must be an Australian thing. It must term. be an Australian thing. It's, um, you, you don't give kids red cordial because it makes them hyperactive. Like, And you, you were very I energetic. was just, you know, like I was a bit animated and excited. And he was not having any of that, apparently. But Yes, it is really, it can be devastating when an author that you really look up to, where they... The, I was probably not even 20. Like I was, I was a very, ba Janelle now would not be phased at all by such a teeny little, but, but then I was, I was just shocked that someone who I thought was considered and empathetic and would just be mean. Well, and there's a lot of writers that are complete assholes and maybe <laughs> the only way they can express their empathy is in their work, but they, yeah, maybe they, some of them justify it by I'm thinking of uh, what's his name? Um, yes, Naipaul is was supposed to be a complete jerk, but wrote apparently very empathetic novels. And I think there's quite a few examples, and most of them were male writers. Go figure. <laughs> <laughs> Not shocked. <laughs> That's a male writer you're talking about yeah, as well, isn't it? It is. It is. And I do wonder if it would have been different if I was if I was a male, but. I also I just, there's such a, and I'm like, maybe he just wanted to look cool, you know, like, how threatened are you that you've got to be sarcastic to some enthusiastic kid? That's right. And there's such a power imbalance because, you know, we read their work and we kind of feel like we know the writer, but they don't know anything about us and, you know, have, they're having a bad day or whatever. They don't like these kind of readings or they don't, they're not, they just have to go through the motions. Whatever the explanation is, it doesn't matter, but it can be crushing. I remember it wasn't a writer that I had ever read, but I went, approached a, a, a female Canadian writer many years ago at a book festival, a writer's festival with her novel and a pen 
and she was talking to somebody and I just waited respectfully and she looked at me and she said, would you like me to sign your book? And yes. And the way that I handed the book and the pen to her, it was really awkward for her to take it. And I don't know the way I opened the book or I didn't open the book, but she kind of snapped at me and said, well, you're going to have to blah, 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 like this. And it's like, oh. and it wasn't like, you know, she wasn't my hero, but yeah. I will never ever read her <laughs> <laughs> because of that because yeah. you were made to me and why should I <laughs> so. it's funny because they must feel so exposed too like you, you, you write a novel you really are emptying your brain a little bit and I feel like that's a kind of you know public nakedness that most of us don't ever have to experience thank god public nakedness uh, speak for yourself <laughs> for me it's now that everybody's on social media and the public relations book tour people in publishing houses have just disappeared and every and the authors are expected to do all of that on social media yeah. i am really uncomfortable now i have started to make po really positive connections with certain writers on Twitter and so on, and had them on my channel, and that is a, has been a really positive experience. But I'm talking about the kind of writers, and I think they have they're kind of pushed into this by their publisher, where they stalk Twitter and Goodreads, and as soon as you start, as soon as you mark their novel as to be read, or as soon as you start reading it, and especially if you finish it and rate it. They're liking it and commenting and retweeting. And that makes me really uncomfortable. Have you ever had that happen to you? Well, I don't write books. Okay. But in terms of anything that you do on social media, have you ever had an author that kind of was no, hanging on your... Because I think it's because we don't Twitter. Ah. And I think that's where everyone is so much more active. And I don't know if I'm ready for it. Yes. Book Twitter is the safest part of Twitter, but it's still not as safe as booktube. <laughs> <laughs> Which is weird. <laughs> so I've had, I'll just tell you about one or two. Like, like I say, I've had really positive connections where I've actually started to befriend writers that I have that found me through social media, found my reviews, found my videos. So it's not like it's all negative, but I remember one, this one's really funny, and I won't name the writer, even though the whole thing happened on Twitter. I could name the writer, but a British novelist, she was nominated for some book prize and I started reading her novel and I, I was bored to tears. <laughs> <laughs> and I bailed and I did a bail review and the only kind of reviews that I write on Goodreads anymore are bail reviews and I, you know, they're, some of them are pretty darn good, I must say. And <laughs> So yes, I did a yes, three, very gently spoken. <laughs> I did a three-line bail review on her novel. And of course the tweet automatically, Goodreads posted the tweet. Not that I objected to that, but my yes. tweet went out. I didn't tag her. I don't I think that's totally not cool for a reviewer to tag a writer on a negative review. That's just rude. And I didn't do that. I just, you know. Goodreads post posted that I had bailed on the book and, and then my review and she retweeted it with a comment. I, I agree with this decision or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you read it then. <laughs> <laughs> this was, she had a good sense of humor, but it was like, oh, you know. Yeah. yeah. I guess if, you, if you're putting eye out there, you're going to get positive and negative reactions and you've got to find a way to deal with the negative reactions that don't get you down. So if you make a joke about it. And that I think the reviews, the social media reviews that are not professional reviews, those are not for the writer. Like the writer should just, the author should just back off. If, if it's you and me reviewing something on Goodreads or on our blog, just back off. If it's a positive review and you read it as a writer and you read it and you're gratified, if you're touched, if you're just happy, I don't have see any problem with making a comment or retweeting it, but otherwise just back off and let us kind of do yeah. our own thing. 
it's supposed to be like reading is an isolated person's pursuit. We don't actually want to interact with you, author person. <laughs> like not in any real sense. Just one more quickly. I started a collection of short stories by an Australian writer, and the first story was amazing. And I talked about it in my Friday reads, and another Australian booktuber saw my party reads and then retweeted the fact that I loved the first story and tagged the writer in her tweet and then that writer just <laughs> latched on to me and every week I'd read a few more stories and so she would retweet and she would say oh I'm so glad you're enjoying it but the, the truth was every other story in that short story collection sucked <laughs> <laughs> So I was so self-conscious because she was like just on me, just stalking me. And so in my Friday reads where I'd finished it up, I said the truth, but I said it uncharacteristically politely. <laughs> uh, I never that. Like that ruins the fun for everyone. No one wants to be polite. <laughs> well, I just think if you're a writer and you're sensitive, don't check your own reviews especially for from amateur reviewers i certainly don't consider yeah. myself a, a professional and certainly don't like wasn't there a famous case where a writer did they kill the reviewer or a, physically assault the reviewer like they, they googled them and went to their house and they did something bad i don't remember how bad it was i don't think it was murder but maybe a physical assault or something like you know, shutting some... up their house is bad enough for me i can't yeah. let anything more more trying the That's Neil Gaiman turning up at my house because I say he. <laughs> Do you read much Australian literature? No, I think I, I got into Tim Winton in my youth because I studied literature at high school and that's what they teach you because he's Australian and somewhat successful. But other than that, really, I've read very little Australian literature. Look, I was going through my audiobook subscription and it had a whole bunch of free books and I was clicking on them to see if they were any good because they were free. And I realised that I, I'd rejected like 10 of them in a row. I'm why did you reject all of them? I realised that they all said they were Australian and I instantly assumed that they were low quality and moved on. <laughs> so I've got a terrible prejudice against my own country. Well, I think that there are a greater number of fabulous Australian writers than there are great Canadian writers. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. That's interesting, because I've so, probably read more Canadian writers than I have Australian. So can I issue you a challenge? Well, you first of all, that. you guys are kind of on the same page about Australian literature? Yeah, I think so. Like you uh, don't yeah. Okay, so I'm going to challenge you to read it, each of you to read at least two books by Australian writers during Aussie April. Yeah, done. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm going to read six or more, so oh. you guys can at least read two. two. <laughs> Give it a crack. Yeah. Six. Six. Do you know what they are yet? Do you know I, who they are yet? I know one of them is the canonical one by, what is her name? Miles Franklin? Miles Franklin, yeah. That's the award person. The award person. The, yeah. Yeah. What is it called? It's a famous novel. Mm -hmm. I am buddy reading it with Kimberly of Quebec of... of um, Middle of the Book March. Middle of the Book March, thank you. What is her famous book? My Brilliant Career, that's where it is. Ah, oh, I hear about this a lot. I hear about a lot of people bailing on it, which is interesting. Well, you know me, I never bail, so it should be okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you'll definitely finish that one. Um, oh, I've got on my list The Yield by Tara... Someone. June Winch, Tara June Winch. I have it on. Uh, I have it on my pile here, and I'm doing a buddy read of that with Greg of supposedly fun for Aussie April. Yeah, uh, that's on my radar, and I've got another Aboriginal author wrote. I think it's called The Swan Book. Oh, by Alexis Wright. Yeah, that's the one. That's also Good. an Indigenous author. Yeah, so Alexis. they're both on my shelf. So while I've said I completely reject Australian. Literature. It might actually only be white Australian literature that I have no interest in. <laughs> well, I think that we can all agree, and you know, we're going to get a lot of down votes for this, but let's just tell the truth as we see it. White people suck everywhere. Yes. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is a very white crowd. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're all very melanin. 
have you read the New Zealand writer who is gay? The, he's most famous for a book that was made into a movie I've never seen, but uh, I don't, you might have to help me with the pronunciation. With the Imehara. Oh. I'm pronouncing it like it's a Japanese name, which is totally screwed. It's not pronounced that way. What is the name of the movie? Maori. Ma Maori's, uh, it's a Maori. He's a Maori writer. Yeah. Queer Maori writer. And this is one of his gay novels. Gay novels. The, the Uncle's Story. But yeah. he's famous for, is it Free Willy? Oh, that's, like Free Willy, the movie. That's, that's hilarious. Free Willy say? sounds like a gay X-rated book, but anyway. Um, there, is, there, is nothing, there is nothing gay or X-rated. You are going to be so disappointed when you hire that movie. <laughs> <laughs> this, on the other hand, is supposed to be really powerful about a coming out story about a gay Maori person from New Zealand. So it's on my shelf, and I hope to get to it maybe in 20, sometime this year. That very interesting because from I, I don't know a lot about Maori culture but it is very masculine yes just something yeah, yeah, like the, I, I've got some private videos like that but we won't talk about those now <laughs> um, <laughs> there was a Australian booktuber before your time Leah and her channel name was hide and seek who I was got to be really good friends with, did some buddy weeds, did some collaborative videos, and then suddenly she disappeared. It's just like, I'm still grief stricken about it. And she recommended this as one of her favorite novels of all time. So I bought it on that recommendation. It's still on my shelf. That's interesting. interesting, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. What was the first book you ever connected on that played an important part in you guys realizing you were the one for each other? Oh. Um. I think probably the book that we agree most belligerently on is East of Eden. Ah, oh, I have not read it. Oh, you should. It's so good. I want to. And why the choice of belligerently? You mean the... <laughs> I feel that neither of us will ever change our position on this book, no matter how many we read. Oh, so you don't agree on it? No, we no, completely we agree. We, 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 okay. we completely but agree. anybody else who doesn't like it, you want to eradicate from the face of the earth? Is that? Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you don't like East of Eden, you are just wrong. Okay. <laughs> Why should I read East of Eden? It has the best villain you have ever, ever met. Just yeah. hands down. Hands down, the best villain. There's no comparison. It's not slightly better than anybody. He's the best villain. Also, it's just. I mean, I assume you've read Steinbeck and generally like Steinbeck's style. It's been, it's been decades and I don't even remember if I liked him, but I think so. As long as Steinbeck is a Sean type style, I can't see, you, it's just so rich. There are so many layers in what he puts down and he will not allow you to ignore what he is saying because he's going to beat you over the head of it with it with every metaphor and allegory and illusion that he can cram in to this massive <laughs> <laughs> some people find Seinbeck a bit too easy so they don't like him because yeah because it's easy to find these things but yeah I like that he uses different techniques to show you now, had you each read it separately before you met, or did you read it because of the yeah. other? No, I read it when we were already in a relationship, but I didn't read much before I met Nell, so... Oh, yeah, that's probably the... But you had probably. read East of Eden. No, no, I read you East had... of Eden after we met, but I didn't tell Nell I was reading it, so she didn't know, so I formed my opinion independently. Yeah, he's so sneaky like that. But she put it on your radar. Yeah. Yeah. So Scott passed the East of Eden test. Yes. <laughs> well, I'm going to undergo it myself, and let's just see whether we get, <laughs> get, we get rid of Scott. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, this has been an absolute delight. I can't believe I'm going to say this because I didn't think it was possible, but I love you even more now. Aww. Oh, this has been so much fun. <laughs> Giggle Can we make a this a regular thing? What are you doing this time tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Probably drinking wine, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
I'll call you then. Thank you very much for having Thank us. Thank you very much.